Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk a little bit about how to, honestly, how to protect yourself from jealousy, how to, uh, what to do if you are feeling jealousy. And let's just talk about the purpose of this because it's a little bit different than I think what people are used to, at least from us. Is the, the purpose of this show is like, I want to make, if you're watching this, I want to make you not only have a better life and make more money, but I want to help you become a better person in doing it. I think that that's something that people miss out on. And the best recipe in the history of the world for becoming a better person and becoming more successful is the Bible. Uh, everyone who comes into any of our programs, we just we talk about it all the time. Like if you want to, if you want to become wealthy the right way, you should just read Proverbs every day. It's the best self help book in the world. Um, so we're just gonna have a conversation about it. Specifically in this video, let's talk about jealousy and how do you deal with when you feel that inferiority complex that sometimes rears its head and shows up when you see someone else doing something that you're not doing so if we're honest like i'll just tell you this right now off the bat um i still wrestle with i will see someone else and uh, one of my great friends he just bought a plane yeah, Dan. Oh. Dan's like really rich. And um, I'm like, dude, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. But there's also this inside hidden place in me where I'm like, why? I don't have a plane. Maybe I, maybe I suck. Maybe I'm like a, a loser. Maybe I'm not anywhere close to successful. And then if you don't stop this like rabid down spiral, Eventually you get to a place where you literally believe your whole life sucks and you're a loser just because you don't have a plane. This is the, the coolest part about social media is we're now connected to so many cool people who we learn so much from. The, the average information transfer of today's society is like 100,000x what it was 200 years ago. People are living longer. They're smarter. For the most part, people are more wealthy. But you know what? They're less happy. I was going to say, they're a lot less happy. We're not as happy. There's actually an interesting study on this. Um, I don't recall where it's at, but I was talking with a friend of mine just a couple months ago about we're not, like the human consciousness was never designed to handle the catastrophes of the entire world at the same time. So 500 years ago, like you live in, you know, you live in a little city and something could happen really bad across the world and you wouldn't know about it. Mm -hmm. So the positivity of our lives half a millennia ago, very different than the positivity right now. And so I always chuckle sometimes to myself when I see people, mostly political people, and they're like, yo, this election, if we don't, if we don't fix this election, America's done. And I'm like, probably not. They're like, man, the world's getting worse. It's so, it's so unsafe, it's so dangerous. It's only because we're connected to too many things. So social media has helped us, but it's almost equal in the proportion that it's hurt us. Because while it has made our brains smarter, it's actually sucked out the energy source of our hearts, which is the fulfillment and the excitement and the enthusiasm and of, of living well. And so jealousy is a big thing. And I don't think that it fully goes away. I think that this is why sometimes rich people are more unhappy than people who are not as rich. Because once you get to a certain level, how do, we, how do we compare, how do we know what's rich or poor or good or bad? Like how do we know? Only through comparison. There's a study done, I think this was the Wall Street Journal, uh, many years ago, at least it was published in the Wall Street Journal, where they did this experiment and they said, they took a group, have you heard this? Mm -mm. They took a group and they asked them, uh, you know, would you rather make $200,000 where everyone else around you was making 100000 or would you rather make 300000 while everyone around you made 500000 And people pick the lower amount despite it being lower because the comparison side of human nature, it just makes you unhappy when you compare and you're not making as much as other people. Isn't that crazy? Damn. 
This is because of jealousy. This is because we, we are just societally programmed to decide good or bad based on this question compared to what. So there's no real, there's not a clear basis anymore for what's good, what's bad, what's rich, what's poor. All we have is the comparison of where are we compared to other people. Um, so jealousy is, is one of the probably the more destructive like emotions that you can feel. Um, and when it gets really crazy is when you start studying like old Jewish tradition and old cultures, like they call it the, um, it's not only your own jealousy that affects you, it's actually other people's jealousy that can affect you as well. Hmm. They call this the evil eye. So the, the Hebrew like evil eye is the negative energy that comes into your life because other people are jealous of you. So we have two sides of, of this topic. So you're affected if somebody else is jealous of you? Yes. It's a negative energy transfer. So I'll give you, uh, let's talk about energy for a second because this is going to, this is only going to connect if, if we talk about energy. Yeah. All right. So I'm doing this, um, my wife and I are going to this muscle testing facility. This is the one in California? Mm -mm. No. This is in Nashville. Okay. I was talking with uh, Keith. Yesterday, and I said, dude, you need to get muscle tested. I'm going to call my doctor and see if there's somebody on the West Coast for you. But I grew up with chiropractors. My uncle was a chiropractor. I had a, a great uncle that was a chiropractor. My first adjustment was like when I was seven months old. And there's a kind of a school of thought in chiropractic. It, this kind of was, a chiropractic was a proponent of this called kinesiology. Have you ever heard of it? Heard of it, but I don't know what it means. Kinesiology is like the study of energy. Really, it's like how energy moves through the body. So you have these uh, meridian pathways in your body. Eastern medicine is really big on like your meridian pathways. You have your ever chi? Mm -hmm. It's like the middle of your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. So we think about these things sometimes in, in the church world. They think it's like, you know, like no, none of that. Like it's bad, but it's actually extremely biblical. Uh, energy moves through the body. The whole world is made up of energy. We talk about quantum, it's all energy. And so energy moves through the body and it moves from person to person to person. So the whole idea of Dr. Hawkins and kinesiology is certain things make you strong and certain things make you weak. Hmm. So if you think, if you calibrate to a athlete, let's say a, a professional runner, and you take the same athlete and you say, hey, on this run, think about pride. Think about how you're better than everyone. Think about how you can't fail because you're at the top. And then they'll clock them. And they'll run, you know, a, a six second 40. Then you say, okay, run it again. But think about courage. Think about how you're doing this for your family. And it's hard and it's difficult, but you're doing it for other people. And they'll run physically faster when they change what they're thinking about. This is a big base block of kinesiology and the map of consciousness because the, the level of energy that you calibrate at determines how strong you are, how fast you are, how creative you are. And so you can go all the way up to level 1000. And level 1000 is like oneness. So when you, when you do muscle testing, you can actually test the energy in a thing. You can rate the energy of this desk, you can rate the energy of the phone, you can rate the energy of whatever you're reading, a book. Mm -hmm. So the Bible rates at a thousand. And then you've got some old. The Bible does. The Bible does. You've got old Greek manuscripts that will rate at like 700, 750. And so anyways, I'm at this muscle tester. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a particular style of kinesiology called NAET. And you, know, you hold your arm up and we'll push it down. And there's a force applied to your arm. And what happens is when you're thinking about something that's damaging to your meridian or your, your energy circuits, you will lose power in your arm. So what's happening is the body is locking up when something is damaging. When you get to, into a lower level of consciousness, your body doesn't want that in. You think about the middle of the body like a lake mm -hmm. and your legs and your arms and the extremities are like rivers. So energy kind of goes from here to here, to your legs, to your arms. 
And when something is damaging, you have these dams that just lock up. And so the body won't let energy go out or in because it doesn't want that in the source. Does this make sense? Mm. You with me still? What, when you describe consciousness, what's like a simple way that you would describe consciousness? Or is it just not another word for uh, mental state? Light and dark. Got it. Think about it that way, like light and dark. So if, if light is going to calibrate higher because it's, it's wholeness, it's connectivity, um, it's peace, it's acceptance, it's joy, it's all these things. Anything dark probably gets under that 250 on the levels of energy where it's shame, apathy, pride even. Is damaging to, if you remember Tony Robbins who said this, um, life supports life. Life supports life. So things that support life are supported. Mm -hmm. And death supports death. So anything that is not supportive of your best life is going to be like, the body's going to try to cut that off. So there's no like, there, there's no, <laughs> this is what's crazy. There's no like physical and spiritual. That doesn't exist. It's just one. And so your spiritual, your emotional, your mental, your, your physical is all connected together. Which is why I wrote a post the other day and it said like, things in the natural follow, the supernatural things in the supernatural follow, intention and expectation. So when, you are in, when your intent is light or good, then everything coils around that and you become physically stronger. Which is why there are people like Joe Dispenza going through hospitals right now, healing kids. Joe Dispenza is not like a believer. He's not a Christian. Hmm. You don't have to be. This is the problem, I think, with Western Christianity, if you want to actually go into it. Because they've almost, Western Christian theology has basically kind of been like, these are my toys, and if you're not a Christian, you can't play with them. But picture, picture this, this analogy for a second. And if we're going off pace, just pull us back in, man. But... Hmm. Um, Let's say you're a believer and you believe God is the one true God, okay? Mm -hmm. We know that you are, but let's just pretend that you are. If you build a vehicle and you put the engine together and the wheels go on and everything, the vehicle works. Does it also work for a non-believer? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's not about who built it, it's about the vehicle itself. 100%. And the usefulness of the vehicle. This is why tithing or generosity works even if you're an atheist because mm. it's not you can't just be like yeah you don't believe in god so you can't drive this car that's not how it works that's stupid right think about this analogy we'd be like that's dumb you're just stupid <laughs> like if you're like nope you can't drive the car unless you believe that that there is a god that doesn't work that way so the same with the biblical principles think about the principles in the bible like a vehicle you can use them the way they're designed to use even if you don't believe in the power that created them. Does that have anything to do with who's feeding the power then? Does no. that change? No? No. So when, where do you get, <clears throat> I know that the power of the devil comes from, ultimately it all leads back to God because nothing happens without him. Mm -hmm. But how... What's the, what's, if this is off topic, tell me, but like, where is the difference between demonic power and godly power? Like the power, what, where is that, where's that line? We're going light to dark. Is there power in dark? Yeah. Actually, there are, um, Frederick, um, what's his last name? There's a book called Levels of Energy by some guy, and it's a derivative of Maps of Consciousness. And he's the first one that's gone into light, a thousand, dark, zero. There are negative energies. You can actually get into negative 100, negative 150. And this is the realm of the demonic. So there's power in good things. There's also power in bad things. And so what we have is we just have one spectrum. We don't have two different spectrums. And dark energy and dark levels have power but they're always going to corrode you mm. so we've taught this in sales before where there's like there's light energy clean clean energy and and dark energy and the problem with dark energy is you're usually just trying to you know, beat everyone self-enrichment and 
the problem with that, the, with that energy or that power is it's self-destructive. So you can still get something from it, but it's going to corrode the vessel or the vehicle that's using it. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you get a car to drive faster if you put something in it's not supposed to happen. It won't last long. It won't. It's like, yeah, you're, th this is not the way that this engine was designed to be driven, and so you're going to break this, this engine. So it's really less about, and this gets trippy because it's like, it, it, it kind of changes the paradigm of how we think about power in general. Is there power in being manipulative? Totally. But it's not all good power. And this is why the, the Bible says that God judges the heart. This is the intention of, of what you're using. But back to jealousy. Um, je can, can you achieve a lot with a chip on your shoulder? Yes. Totally. Is that going to corrode the body even while it makes you more money? Yes. So that's why the, the goal is not just to make more money. The goal is to become more whole. It's the, any, a blessing is anything that gets you closer to like your true mission in life, which is interesting because one of the ways in Jewish culture that you protect yourself from the evil eye is having a life of purpose. And when you have a life of purpose, you're less affected. You're, you're not going to be tossed quite as to and fro by what other people think about you. And so this gets into an interesting topic because when, when we think about jealousy, jealousy is oftentimes going to bump you down this levels of energy, the maps of consciousness, and it's going to put you into a place of pride, place of shame. Um, apathy is right below shame. And the lower you get, the less power you have and the more you have to hustle which is sometimes where you can tell if somebody is in a place of like a heuristic, how do I know if somebody is operating from a place that's way lower on the maps of consciousness? They're usually just hustling their entire life. They can't turn off. They have no power. They have no leverage. And so they're compensating for their lack of power with just an insane, insatiable work ethic. And that's like a heuristic that you can kind of patch into. And so the... Back to the topic of, of jealousy. One of the things I learned when I was on my first come up, like the first time I was making crazy money, I was talking about it all the time. Like, here are all my watches, here's my cars. And there's, there, there are friends that I have that are still doing this. And they're like, you know, I'm doing it to inspire others and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what you, what you actually do is you kind of put this, you put this beacon on you. Pause, please, so the dogs can share their side of the story. <clears throat> Should I go put them up? Whatever you want, man. Doesn't bother me either way. Is it loud? Uh, it's not going to be too bad. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, you put this radar on your back where you're almost attracting the, the evil eye. If you look at like a sum of what Jesus talked about, like there's, a, there's a verse in Proverbs. Um, it's in the 20s. I think it's Proverbs 23 where it said, Be careful not to eat too much at a table, lest you attract the, the evil eye. So even Proverbs mentioned the evil eye, which the evil eye is just other people being jealous of you. This is why Jesus was like, pray in secret. See if you can look it up real fast. Yeah. Just Proverbs, do Proverbs 23, evil eye. Proverbs 23, 6 through 8. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Okay. Because if, so why? Because if they have an evil eye and they're giving you something, it's probably it's the wrong intention anyway. But it's mentioned even in the, the Old Testament. So it is still biblical. It's not just some weird thing. It's still biblical. One of the ways that you can kind of block off this, this energy from other people is through not flaunting the things that you have which is why Jesus was so hardcore about the Pharisees. Like, shut up, go pray in secret. Give, give to other people and never say anything about it. It's actually circumventing this spiritual law of not only is it wrong to be jealous of other people, but it's also wrong to elicit jealousy from other people. Both sides hold, hold weight. Is this why Jesus healed some people in public and then others he told to be quiet and then other people he yeah, just like, told he wouldn't. Well, there's differing thoughts on that. Sometimes 
earlier on, he was, he didn't want anybody to know who he was until it was his time. You know, so even that's a cool part of Jesus's life because who does that? Like, who is like, yeah, I just built like 17 orphanages and I just made a billion dollars, but I don't want anyone to know it. That's so weird. It's like so contrary to human nature. Um, other ways that are interesting, like old Jewish text says ways that you can protect yourself from the evil eye is like wearing a red cloth or like a red bracelet. So some of this gets into like, really? That doesn't seem very effective. But then you, you look at how the Bible interprets itself and Rahab the prostitute in Jericho, she hangs out a red cloth out of her, out of her room. It's like, okay, well, there's something here about how the world's designed to work. Blood is the color red. And so there's, even, even if you tap into like astrology, and uh, we were talking about this last night. I'm reading this book, or I'm trying to get through this book called The Book of Foundations that Abraham wrote. And he literally, it's the first record, it's the source material for astrology. So when, when you hear Christians who are like, oh, astrology is evil. No, it's really not. It's, a, it's an automobile, and you can put an evil person in an automobile, but that doesn't make the automobile e evil. So we have to get away from this, like, this, this power or that power or this thing or that thing. This is why Christians struggle so hard with thinking that money is bad. Because so many bad people have it. M bad people have money. That doesn't mean money is bad. And, and it's just as bad to be broke as a joke as it is to be rich and be a bad person. Like both are bad because the only way you can stop a person with money is to have money. So it's, it's just an immaturity level of realizing that everything God created, he created as a principle and all of these principles hold other principles in check. And the more we can use the principles the right way, the better off we will be. And if we're, caref if we're not careful, I think that we can get into this weird place where um, we're taking our self-worth from a comparison of what other people have. And that's where jealousy becomes a really big, big problem. You can flip to the other side and you can take your self-worth based on how much you have in proportion to others. And that's where the evil eye becomes a big problem. Both are issues of the heart. Both are problems. John Bevere talks about the two ditches on, the, uh, on each side of, of the narrow road. Have you heard him talk about this? Mm -mm. He says on one ditch you have legalism. That's the, when the church, and the days of Billy Graham and like old school Western Christianity, we were all in the ditch of legalism. It's like drinking is a sin, money is a sin, it's just a bunch of dumb theology. But then we pendulum swung to the other ditch, which is lawlessness, which is there are no rules, everyone goes to heaven and do whatever you want and you know, God will forgive you. And so both ditches, this is the whole Bible, like there's a, an extreme left and extreme right and the narrow road is in the middle of this too. And so with jealousy, you have both of the same, you have the same principle at play. You have, I'm unworthy because I'm not as good as so and so. And then the other side you have, I'm worthy because I have more than so and so and both are actually the same principle of jealousy. It's just going to cost you in different places. Mm. Uh, another way that old school wise that you can kind of indemnify or protect yourself. This is crazy. You ready for this? If you want to protect yourself from jealousy, one of the most interesting spiritual principles is God will send people who talk bad about you. And in Jewish text, when there's negative energy from other people who are jealous and you don't respond, it actually transfers that negativity to them. So it transfers the curse. So part of like when the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's a really fun verse that people like to put on coffee cups and stuff. But they're violating and they're dismantling that principle because we can't, we can't believe that no principle formed against me will prosper and then try to combat the weapon in, with ourselves. 
Because it means that you don't believe what you say. You you're, you're invalidating the principle by injecting your own defense mechanism into the universe or into the world around you. And so when people come out of the woodwork and they're like jealous and they're mad at me and they're talking bad about me, the way to actually combat that using this spiritual principle is to just be like, good, awesome. You know, say whatever you want. Because the truth actually doesn't necessarily need a defense. Defense is typically applied to things that have to be defended. But if no weapon formed against me is going to prosper, then I don't have to protect myself from the weapon. What, what level of energy does this calibrate on, by the way? Acceptance. Acceptance is very high. So we can't, we, to defend ourselves, we usually have to go down the levels of energy, and then we, we let go of the power that is at the higher levels of energy to get down to that level of defense. And then we just circumvent, like we ended up, we end up kind of undoing our own protection mechanisms. What are the Beatitudes? I'm thinking of the fruit. The Beatitudes are not the fruit of the Spirit. That's not what they are. Let me tell you. <laughs> Expose, I'm exposed. Fake Christian right now. <laughs> Jake's a fake Christian. He's done with worship. All right, so the Beatitudes is Jesus using this principle to actually defend yourself against all of these negative concepts. Check this out. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Hmm? What? That doesn't seem good. That doesn't seem like a good thing. Blessed are those who mourn. Whoa, that doesn't seem good either. Watch how counter this is. Blessed are those who are persecuted. That doesn't sound good. Check this out, ready? Blessed are you when people revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely. Um, imagine me being like, hey everyone, welcome to the good life. Here's how to get a good life. Get people to falsely accuse you. The end. People will be like, yeah, I'm out. But this is like how the, the universe actually works. Because what happens, and Jesus knew this, this is according to like what Jesus knew, when people come against you and they're angry at you and they say dumb stuff about you falsely, it is taking any negative consequence that we have stored up for ourselves and it is reallocating that to that person. This is Kabbalah, if you study Kabbalah. It's like the, Kabbalah is a really, really old, um, almost like Jewish mysticism, where when you are sick, good. You're being prepared for the new level. When you lose money, good. You're being trained on how to get more money. When you uh, lose a business, good. You're about to get a new business. And it's this idea of, spiritually speaking, the biggest risk to getting what you want is the inability or unwillingness to let go of what you have. So if God really cares about you, really cares about you, then he will do the work to remove those things that we're not willing to let go of. This is why the, this is why the Holy Spirit took Jesus to the wilderness. This is why the Israelites wandered around in the wilderness. Wilderness seasons, they, they force you to, um, they force the things that are not supposed to be there to die. Just think about what a wilderness is. There's no water, there's no food, there's no shelter, there's no protection. So uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, anything that can be shaken will be shaken. This is what a wilderness season is, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I went through in 2022. There were things that I had, attitudes, mindsets, beliefs, trauma, shame. And when you go through a wilderness season, it has a killing off effect of the things that are going to hurt you in the promised land. So like that next tier up, we can't carry our baggage with us to the next tier. So if, a, if, a, if God is loving, then he will orchestrate events that remove those things from you. 
And then how do you, like, one of the things that what you brought up was really interesting because the Bible is basically reframing your perspective. Yeah. It, and it's in one of the things that I went through a couple of years ago, I was in a season where I was like, are, are Christians just crazy psychopathic optimists? And that led me to this question. How do you know, like in hindsight in the Bible, we're able to see what was discipline and what was testing. And testing and discipline, I think, in my opinion, seem like they can feel very similar, but for they're for different purposes. Have you, with this insight in mind, do you feel like you have a good answer for how to know between what's a test and what's a discipline? First of all, to kind of think about what's the utility in knowing. Sometimes it makes a difference, and I think most of the time it, it doesn't. Um, those God loves, he disciplines. And uh, I think that discipline also has a purifying effect. It has a cleansing effect, but so does testing. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between those God loves, he disciplines, and then count it all joy when you're going through awful situations because it tests your perseverance? They kind of have the same outcome. Kind of, I would picture it maybe as like a, a split in the road. When we were skiing a couple weeks ago in Colorado, you're going down this, these slopes, there's all these tangents and, and different things, but they all lead to the same place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there were a couple times when we would get separated, but we, we would just know like the crew's gonna be at the bottom because one's gonna go right, it's gonna go around the tree things in the middle and we're gonna go left, but we meet up at the end. I kind of feel like testing is one and discipline is the other, but they both lead you to the same place, which is wholeness. And it's when you, you're not jealous, you're not shameful, you're not insecure, you're not pursuing your own gain. Um, you're completely focused on what your purpose is and what your mission is. And you know that everything that you inherit is not for yourself, it's for the benefit of the world around you. So leads us back to like when we talked about in the other video, godly wealth, like when godly wealth becomes about you, or when wealth becomes about you, it's, it's an indication that it's probably not godly wealth. And when it's about other people, and when you, when you have the right lens on it, that's sometimes what determines the two but another thing before we move on from this i just threw this in um to talk about jealousy because certain uh the the levels under like 200 actually hurt your body so that's where the meridian pathways lock up and shut down so i just popped this into uh, google it said, when jealousy becomes a persistent feeling, it can trigger the body's stress response, similar to fear or stress. This can lead to physical symptoms such as chronically faster heart rate, shakiness, nausea, vomiting. Continuous stress responses activated by jealousy actually weaken the immune system, making someone more susceptible to illness. Moreover, chronic jealousy is associated with a range of physical health conditions, including heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease, and infection. So remember that time we talked about how a cheerful spirit is good for the bones? It's all in here, man. Like the, the same effect, like we have no idea how much our bodies are actually affected by this map of consciousness and these levels of energy. Because anything high in levels of energy will literally make your body resilient. Anything low will make your body susceptible and vulnerable. Pretty cool, huh? It's wild. 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 Another tool to protect yourself from jealousy and the evil eye is generosity and charity. Um, this is why, like, man, if you want to make more money, you can't argue with the, the way that the principle is designed to work. If you want to make more money, one of the ways to do that is to give money away. And this actually changes the topic because now we're in the topic of money. And money is an energy. So money itself is an energy. So did you know that you can actually be, according to kinesiology, you can be allergic to money? Mm -hmm. So kinesiology and epigenetics dovetail together. So your epigenetics actually carry data, I think it's up to 14 generations. So we have data in our DNA that is coming from some relative I have from 1,200 years ago. 
And a lot of the allergies that you find present in the human body, some of them are not biological. Some of them are emotional. Hmm. And the body sometimes mis improperly associates two things. So have you ever gone through a really hard season and you listen to us, you remember you listen to a song during the season and when you hear that song, it will sort of make you sad. Takes you straight back. Takes you right back, right? Yep. Or like if you had a, a really cool walk on a beautiful sunny day and you're so happy and you listen to this song and then later it can be rainy and dreary, but you listen to that song and you're like, yeah. Yep. The body is always associating. So the, the, own, the whole point of your bloodline is to keep your bloodline alive. That's it. Evolution has like two goals, only two goals. By the way, evolution is very biblical. So we're not talking about Big Bang evolution, we're talking about the perpetuation of the species. And the two goals of evolution are to keep you alive and to make sure that you can procreate. Because like, it's, it's impossible to carry on your bloodline if you're not having babies. So, and I'm, this isn't a weird thing, like I'm not talking about political or anything like that. I'm just talking about literally like we're driven to stay alive and instinctively we want to like have kids so that we can keep the human species alive. When you look at bloodlines, those bloodlines are carrying the DNA now down to the next generation. So uh, some bloodlines are actually more vulnerable than others because there's less data in the bloodline. So say somebody 800 years ago, Okay. This is weird, isn't it? But it's awesome. Some, some, uh, a great, 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 great grandmother, 800 years ago, she had a kid and that kid died and um, she started eating uh, a certain type of food that had sugar in it. The body goes, okay, similar to how we do with music, the body associates, okay, Sugar equals death. And epigenetics can skip. So when, when we did go out to California, me and Lindsay, we, we had our full genome sequencing. And so there were some things that I had that were only, I only had half of it. So it didn't show up for me, but I was a carrier. So I wasn't feeling the, um, I wasn't fully feeling the expression of the code, but I was a carrier of the code. Which means that if, if one of my kids has both sides, not only are they a carrier, but they are an expressor of it. Mm -hmm. So they'll skip sometimes generations. It just stays in the bloodline. So my great, 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 great grandmother has a kid, they have a kid, and they have a kid, and they have a kid, and then somehow with me, I get the carrier and the expression, I get both sides. And now all of a sudden, I'm allergic to sugar. And nobody can figure out why. And you go in and you get tested. And you use kinesiology to test the body. And the body can actually communicate. And the body says, we're not actually allergic to sugar. We've carried this code. And something stressful happened where somebody that I love died. And all of a sudden, the allergy was activated. And now I'm allergic to sugar. And we have to deprogram, essentially cure that, that allergy. So a lot of things that were like, somebody gets randomly sick. somebody all of a sudden it just starts developing chronic headaches. Um, it's because the body has put two and two together. There was a piece of data. The body had the data and it's constantly looking for something to activate that you know, red alert protocol. Something activates it, boom, shut down sugar. We can't have sugar anymore. And then you can cure that, that allergy. This is, this is the, the study of, of epigenetics. And so part of how we can protect ourselves and cure ourselves from these things. It has nothing to do with the body. It has everything to do with the emotional health of the carrier. And so the more emotionally resilient we are, the more whole we are, the more we process the way we feel about things, the, the lower we will suppress the chances of us developing these allergies. And so money, full circle back to being allergic to money, there are times when somebody can go through a, a really great season followed by a really bad season and they're making a lot of money in that season and mentally they misappropriately think that I'm having all these problems because 
more money equals more problems. Mm. And so now they have this genetic code that's printed into their DNA. Because the bloodline wants to keep their kids alive, the bloodline is actually telling their kids, hey, money's not good for you. Like, if you want to stay alive, don't make more money. And then we're allergic to all of these things that have nothing to do with reality. They're not biological at all. They are purely emotional. And this is why when, when you have a father who's an alcoholic, the kid's more susceptible to be an alcoholic. When you have a mom who is, uh, has anger issues, the kid has, is more likely to have anger issues. Because we're not just transferring um, genetic physical code, we're transferring emotional state to our children. Wow. Classic example of this that just happened to me, um, if you're interested, is um, for the past two years, you know this, I've had this feeling constantly in the back of my mind like, I'm missing something, like I'm not, I'm out of place. You know, like I'm not, there's something that I'm not doing. Like you've literally, we, we've had to have these conversations. <laughs> why isn't this, why doesn't this feel good? Like something's wrong. And so I'll journal, I've got thousands of journal entries where I'm just like, I don't know why, but when I wake up in the morning, so I just am like, I'm not doing the right thing. I'm not doing the right thing. And at first I thought it was God, but then I would pray about it and be like, no, it's not God. I don't know what's going on. What is wrong with me? Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. So I go to this kinesiologist. And she's muscle tested me and all of these sorts of things, anxiety, certain foods, uh, shame, like all of it. And they can go through it in their heads. So they're, they're testing you, but they're not speaking. They're just thinking. Because energy actually is the source material for, for everything else. So like you, th you think before you speak. You've never spoken something that you didn't think. So speaking is just a, an outside byproduct of the thought. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So she's going through and she's thinking, 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 boom, hand goes down. I have no energy there. She'll start over, thinking, 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 boom, hand goes down. And she tests it four or five times. And then she says, okay, where you're losing energy, because our energies are bypassing linguistics. It's not about linguistics. Their energy is transferred from one human to the next through touch, through proximity, through, if you're on the phone, it can be through words. And she says, the thing that you're, you're battling with is feeling out of place. I said, oh, shoot, that makes a lot of sense. She's like, let's figure out where it came from. She does it again. She tests, 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 tests. Boom, arm goes down. Does it again, test, test, test. She's like, okay, your body says that it was during your first trimester. You weren't even born yet. Something happened in the first trimester and it was your mother where she felt extremely out of place. She's like, be careful because sometimes if you call them and ask them, you can undo, like you can cause, because they may not have told you. I was like, screw that, I'm calling my mom. But to have to figure out like, what did you do to me? And so I called my mom and she was a teacher and she, they weren't supposed to get pregnant. She had just gotten a job as a teacher. Found out that she was pregnant like two months later. And she says, I specifically remember being in a board meeting with the parents, being like, I'm not supposed to be here. I have a kid. I'm a brand new teacher. And she's like, for several months, I just felt like I was in the wrong place. I said, oh, cool. This is real. And so that was packaged up as a data code, and it was sent to me. And then the doctor says that she's like, now we need to figure out where it was triggered because it's not just the thing that you deal with your whole life. There's an activator. It has to be activated. Let's find out where it was activated. And she does a bunch of testing. And she says the body's saying it's uh, 10 to 11 years old was the first activator. I have no idea where I went to school when I was 10 or 11. I'm trying to remember and I'm like, I remember where I went to school when I was nine, and I remember when I went, where I went to school when I was 15. I don't remember anything in between. And I'm on this table being like, yo, what is wrong with me? Like, how do I not remember where I was? So I call my mom and I was, do you remember your teachers growing up? Mm -hmm. I remember all my teachers. I said, was it Mrs. Robinson? She said, no, Mrs. Robinson was when you were nine. I was like, who was the teacher when I was 10 to 11? 
She says, that's why we homeschooled you. So I was pulled out of school because of this teacher when I was nine or 10 that I couldn't remember. And she said, every day this teacher would pull you to the front of the class and she would make you apologize to the class because you had allergies. You were allergic to grass and ragweed and you would blow your nose and she thought you were making, making it up. And you would have to publicly apologize to the class for disrupting class. And my mom was like, I didn't like that. So I pulled you out of school. And we homeschooled you when you were 13. That's when it was triggered as a kid where I was like, okay, of course, standing in front of a class, I feel out of place. And she was like, let's keep going because your body says that that's not the most recent triggering. Because there's an acute triggering and we're going to find out when that was. <laughs> test, boom, test, boom, over and over. She's like, okay. It was 19 months ago, 18 to 19 months ago. She was like, I want to prepare you for something because sometimes the body can reveal areas of trauma that you've not, you don't actually know. So she says, I'll give you an example. One time somebody came in and we muscle tested them and they had been cheated on by their spouse and the body knew and their mind in it because it's an energy and she's like that was a really awkward conversation so she said the the thing that your body responded to was being taken advantage of and feeling cheated and I said, well, my wife has never cheated on me. I promise you that. Like, you know, Lindsay, like never. But 17, 18 months, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, that was June of 2022. When I gave away my companies because the ownership structure wasn't good. And I felt so taken advantage of during that season. And I was like, okay, this is what it is. This has basically triggered that genetic code. So your body is now associating. You're in a season where you were out of place. She's like, so let's clear it. And they cleared it and they did a bunch of stuff. And yeah, that was like, what, a month ago? It was a month ago. Now, like magic, what's all starting to grow? Everything, every company that I own is set a record month in the last 30 days. Why? Because I'm not changing directions every five seconds. I'm not like, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. It's the weirdest thing ever. And so this, uh, this concept of like, there is a real map of events that's happening spiritually, energetically. If we're not aware of it, we can't do anything about it. And so... The, the funny thing is jealousy, by the way, is, is one of the big regulators of, of that. So when someone feels jealous, a lot of times acute uh, allergies are triggered, which is it trickles back into what this is saying, where it's like the person who feels chronically jealous will get sick all of the time, all the time, because all of a sudden they just become allergic to everything. You look like you're going to pass out, so I'm just going to give you a minute to uh, <laughs> collect yourself. I'm speaking for, uh, hopefully I'm speaking for the viewers here. Hopefully I'm not alone in this. I, if you're listening to this, I, my mind is, it's exploding. And the reason it feels like it's exploding is it's like, you know how many people are like, they're like, hey, you got to do the deep inner work, the deep work. And then people, I think a lot of people hear this stuff and they immediately get like turned off by it. And they think it's, they label it as demonic or whatever. And what we're going deep into is like we label things as evil of what we don't understand because that's a protective defense mechanism to protect us against what we don't know yeah to keep us alive because yeah. we have no idea what we're going to discover if we actually have to open up our minds to things like this so all throughout the bible too exodus 2017 do not covet what belongs to your neighbor including their house wife or possessions which can be seen as a form of jealousy um James 3.14 through 16 warns again uh, against harboring selfish ambition or envy. Stating that where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder. So some people, like some people watching this have, have a really clear gift on, of like 
order is a gift, by the way. So like the world exists in entropy. Mm -hmm. Some people come in and they have a gift for syntropy, which is when you apply focus to something and intention to something, even in the quantum realm, it lines everything up. So some people that we know are very orderly. Everything is, every, their whole life moves in the same direction. And they have this gift of like, they can just put things in order. A lot of business owners are like this. Like so many business owners who are like CEOs have a spiritual gift of order, whether they're Christians or not. They have a, a spiritual command. So like the, the gifts of God are without repentance, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That you can have the gifts and do all the wrong things and they're still going to operate the way they were given. 100%. Let's talk about Coldplay. You know the band? Mm -hmm. I don't think he's a Christian. Mm -hmm. One of the most anointed singers in history. How's that possible? How can you be anointed and not be a believer? Well, isn't anointing different than gifting, though? Because doesn't anointing lift when it's, when it's in disobedience? Does it? Well, isn't, wouldn't, wouldn't Saul be a good example of that? Like Saul's yeah, Saul believes in God, and Saul was a believer in God, and then that was disobedience. But if somebody doesn't believe in God, mm -hmm. they've never encountered God. Mm. Are they being a dis disobedient? Got it. Different, different YouTube video. Yeah, I think so. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Galatians, Paul talks about jealousy and warns against it. So the consistent message all throughout Scripture is like, this is the thing, like the Bible is not a set of rules that you have to follow or you're going to get punished by God. It's like, hey, FYI, you are not, you're a human. I didn't design you to uh, eat batteries. So don't eat batteries. And then the world goes, well, no one's going to tell me what to do. And they eat a bunch of batteries and they die. It's like, okay, well, sorry, you're stupid. Like, that's not how you were designed to live. So the Bible goes, here are the rules of how the universe was put together. Don't covet. People are like, ah, whatever, I don't believe in that. And so they covet and they get sick, then they get cancer, then they die. And it's literally, it's, it's this beautiful map of like, if you want to know how your body was actually created, the body is just, it's not just a random shell. It's integrated through the meridian pathways into your emotional state. Your emotional state controls and manipulates the spiritual state. They all are interwoven together. And so this, this hopefully what we're getting to in this video, and if people want to talk about it, we'll talk about it more, but is jealousy is a negative state for your body. And so if you want to actually have a pathway to advancement, progress, just like in your body, dude, if you want to have an advancement to being physically in shape, ripped, energetic, you stay away from, from too many carbs, stay away from too many sugars, work out, do your cardio. Nobody's arguing with that anymore, right? But it's in the Bible. Like, it's in the Bible. Daniel was more effective than all of the other people because God gave him a diet. So it's not, the, the word of the Lord is, is not like, okay, like go out and just like submit yourself fully and you'll have every, sometimes the word of God is very practical. Very practical. The jealousy is one of those very practical things. Just like if you want your body to be healthy, you follow the rules. If you want your emotional state to be healthy, follow the rules. And one of the biggest rules out there is jealousy puts battery acid into your body. I mean, it, cal it, it calcifies your blood. It slows you down. It ruins your immune system. It messes everything up. If your immune system is not working and you're a creative person and you're constantly sick, no longer are you deploying your creativity to business ideas. You're now deploying your cre creativity trying not to die. And so the worst thing in the world for, for a person to do, whether you're a believer or not, is to violate these old laws and rules that have been around for thousands of years and jealousies at the top. It's one of the, one of the biggest things. Wow. That seems to explain, when you say creatives, how many creatives compare all of their work to everybody else's and then they try to copy it? It doesn't work. Can't it doesn't it. work. There's all of these prophecies too about like, I'm doing a new thing. Well, how are you going to do a new thing if you're copying the old thing? That's not, that doesn't seem like an effective playbook. You know, it's simple. But it's, it's simple, it's practical, and whether, whether somebody 
this is the thing about it, like, God, God's laws work for people who even if they don't believe in him. And generosity is an incubator against jealousy. Pr praying for your enemies is an incubator against jealousy. Allowing other people to talk negatively about you without trying to defend yourself is an incubator against jealousy. All of these things, they're all in Scripture. When people say the Bible is boring, I'm just like, yo, you're, you've never read it. If you were to read it, you'd be like, holy cow, this is like the most crazy thing ever. And it's so contrary to the way that society works. But it's not contrary to old Eastern medicine. It's not contrary. So like Eastern medicine, people used to think that Eastern medicine was demonic. You know? And it's like, actually, it's, it's more effective than Western medicine in most cases, because the body's designed to heal itself. There's a book up there called uh, The Body Electric. It's right by the book uh, Jesus. You see the Jesus book? Yeah, get it. Let's just, let's just show, show them what it looks like. Don't fall on your head, bro. This one really Top level? Cool. Yeah, see it? So, dude, this book right here is fascinating because this book talks about the bioelectricity of the human body and it's cutting edge science and it's by a doctor named Robert Becker. This book on Amazon, by the way, you know how much money this book is? It's like $300. What? It's bad for big pharma. Really? And so there, a lot of the copies are not in circulation. And it talks about there are different things that actually dampen the electricity inside of the body. Because the everything is energy, and this is why, like Nikola Tesla said, the entire universe comes down to two things: magnetism and sound. That's it. Frequency is a sound, so sound is a frequency, and energy can move through magnetism. And so the way he invented elect, like his version of electricity, which should it should have been like self-sustaining forever, it's hard to monetize because you can't charge for it because it's an endless supply. So when you get into studying uh, econom economics, macroeconomics, pricing, Thomas Sowell is an, is an economist. He's got a book, it's right here on the other side of this, called uh, Basic Economics, a 700-page encyclopedia of, of economics. Super it's basic. Pricing, pricing does three things for an economy. It's, it, it's an in information function, it's an incentivizing function, and it's a rationing function. We should do another video on economics. But how do, you, how do you charge for something that is infinite in supply? Why is land profitable? Because it's not infinite. Mm. We're not, we can't go out and create more lands. Like it just, we have what we have. And that is the rationing function and the incentivizing function going at the same, same time. But anyways, that's a different topic for another day. I think if we could put a, put a bow on this, um, the idea would just be to keep in mind that like anytime you are feeling jealous, one of the best ways that you can combat this is go find someone who has less than you and, and pay for their food and give them money or just get money out of your life. It's so counterintuitive. But like when we're feeling jealous, what we tend to do is hoard because we're trying to compare. And one of the easiest ways to do this is actually the, the principle of I'm going to use whatever I have access to at whatever economic tier that I'm at to bless other people to lift other people. And when you get yourself to this mindset, it takes the focus off of others that you feel are better than you, and it puts the focus on what can I do if I had more? I wouldn't enrich myself, I would enrich others. This flips it around. On the flip side, and the other side of the road, on the other ditch, you have this idea of like, one of the best things that you can do is to do great things and not tell anyone because then you're not gonna attract that negative energy from the evil eye, right? So that's what I do. Do you like this? It's great. Good conversation? Great conversation. If you have any questions you wanna jam about it, let us know, put it in the comments, and uh, we'll keep doing this type of stuff. And let us know if you wanna talk about a little bit of economics. The uh, economics, for right now, actually, economics is a really good topic to talk about because the world's kind of teetering in this are we in a recession? Are we not in a, in a recession? And if you understand the basics, the nuts and bolts of it, you can, uh, you can control your, your pathway through it. So thanks for watching. If you need anything, let us know. See you later.